Hey guys, how are you all doing? Welcome to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Naruto discovered about his heritage before he entered the academy, part 1. So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic Namek is Naruto, link is in the description, also subscribe if you enjoy the video, let's start the story. 12 years ago in the village of Konoha, it was a dark night in Konoha, as most had gone to sleep, except for a couple who were in the hospital. That couple was Namaka's Minato and Uzumaki Kashina, who was delivering a baby in the hospital. Push. Push. One of the doctors told Uzumaki Kashina as they were trying to deliver the baby. Meanwhile, Namaka's Minato was anxiously pacing through the hallways as he waited for the results of the pregnancy. There was also Kakashi there, sitting in one of the chairs and watching his sensei pacing. Don't worry, Minato-sensei. I'm pretty sure everything will go well. Kakashi said in order to try and reassure his nervous sensei which was a sight to behold, as his sensei was never nervous. I know Kakashi, but I'm still nervous about all this. I mean, this is going to be our child. Minato replied. Suddenly, he felt a hand on his shoulder and turned to see his sensei, Jiraiya sensei. I thought you left the village already. Minato asked, surprised at seeing them. I was, but then I went by to check on you guys and didn't see you at your house. I then heard from Saratobi that you were at the hospital, and so I came here to see how everything was going. Jiraiya explained with a grin. Arigato Jiraiya sensei. This means a lot to me, and also Naruto since you will be his godfather. Minato replied with a smile. Then, Kakashi started to laugh which got the attention of the student and teacher, and what's so funny about Kakashi? Minato asked. You actually named him after some ramen sensei? Kakashi asked while laughing. I told you it was a bad name. Jiraiya said to his student. I like ramen. Besides, I don't need your approval, hentai Kakashi and Irosenin. Minato said, as he called the two by their nicknames. Damn it, why do you keep calling me that? I hope your son doesn't call me that. Jiraiya replied. Hentai. Kakashi repeated. Minato-sama. We are finished with the operation, but the head doctor said, as he came out of the surgery room. But what? Minato asked, and, as he did, lightning struck outside. When the doctor did not respond, Minato grabbed him, but what? Minato said. I am your wife. As she didn't make it through. I'm so sorry. The doctor said. This is a joke, right? You're joking, right? Minato yelled. I wish I was, but I am not. I'm terribly sorry, Hokage-sama. The doctor said. Here is the baby sir. A female nurse said and brought a blonde baby boy with blue eyes, crying. Minato smiled at the baby and then took it from the nurse and began cradling it. Naruto Namek is Naruto that's your name Minato began to say before tears started to fall from his eyes. Minato sensei. Kakashi said as he saw the sad look on his sensei's face. Suddenly, an explosion occurred in the village and screams of villagers could be heard. What's going on? Minato asked as the hospital shook. Okage-sama. A demon named Kaiubi is attacking the village. He's too powerful for us to hold back. A said, as he appeared in the hospital. Kaiubi? That demon? Minato asked. Sensei, what should we do? Kakashi asked. Minato looked at his son for a while before he got a serious look on his face and turned to face Jiraiya and Kakashi. I'll use that to seal the monster into my son. Until then, hold him off as long as you can while I get prepared. Minato said, shocking the two men. Are you insane? That is too dangerous and you don't even know if that child can hold the demon. Jiraiya replied. Besides, isn't it a bit too much to ask your son to become the container of the demon? Kakashi asked. And who else can I use? I can't put this burden on any child other than my own. Besides, who's better fit to hold the demon than the child of the Hokage? Minato said as he looked down at Naruto who was giggling despite the danger outside the hospital. So you're really determined to go through with this, aren't you? Well then, I will not stop you. Just make sure you don't mess up. Jiraiya grinned. Of course I won't, Iro Senen. Minato replied with a huge grin. Kakashi san. Thank God you're here. One of them on the battlefield said. Okage sama said to hold off the beast until he arrives. He will take care of everything. Kakashi said and then nodded. Yash, everything is set. Minato said as he then picked up his son who now had a seal in his navel. You're gonna be a hero, Naruto. Yes you will, yes you will. Minato said as he jiggled his son a bit, making the said baby laugh. And I hope they are able to see you as the container, not the demon. Minato thought as he looked at his son with sad eyes and then headed off. Minato quickly arrived on the battlefield where there were many wounded lying down. I have to hurry. Kuchiya no jutsu. Minato said as he then performed the summoning and summoned a huge red frog. Hmm, it's been a while, Minato. The frog said. Sorry for summoning you Gamabunta, but I need your help in sealing that. Minato said, pointing to the Kaiubi. Kaiubi, huh? 
Chi, what kind of mess did you guys get yourselves into this time? Gamabunta asked. I don't know, but right now, we have to seal it now before he destroys the entire village. Minato said, as he got on top of the frog's head. Got it? Gamabunta said. What is this? A puny human, and Gamabunta, the old relic of a frog. Kaiubi scoffed. You shouldn't underestimate us humans, Kaiubi. We can be quite resilient. Minato said, as he then started to go through some seals. Whatever you do won't work, puny human. Kaiubi roared, as it lunged toward Gamabunta, and Minato. You better hurry Minato. I am no match for that demon. Gamabunta said, as he saw the demon head for them. I'm done. Now eat this. Shiki Fuin. Minato yelled, and then suddenly, a death god appeared behind him, and the seal on Naruto activated. The Shinigami. Bukana, impossible. Are you actually going to seal me, the Kaiubi, and that child? Kaiubi roared, as he felt his soul being pulled out. Of course I am. The only thing I have to pay for is my life. Minato said with a smirk. You've got guts human, but if you think that this seal will hold me for long, then you're mistaken as soon as I find a way out, I'll tear this entire village down, including that man. Kaiubi said before he was finally sealed into Naruto. It's done gua. Minato began to say before feeling an immense pain in his heart and falling on the floor. He then looked at his son and smiled, I'm sorry Naruto, but I guess I won't be watching you grow into the next Hokage. Take care, my son. Minato said as he touched his son's face and then went cold. The little baby Naruto giggled and crawled up to play with his father's face, but then, as if he could understand what had happened, began to cry when his father did not respond, and the rain began to fall down. Naruto, POV. My name is Uzumaki Naruto, and I'm 13 years old. 12 years ago, the Yandame Hokage defeated the Kaiubi in order to stop the demon fox from destroying Kanoha. But strangely enough, ever since the day I was born, people have hated me. They glared at me with eyes that could burn brighter than the sun, and were merciless ruthless toward me, treating me like the lowest life form that ever existed, as if I was a demon. When they would attack me, they would say, take that you vile demon. Or my husband is dead because of you. Do us a favor, and just drop dead. Basically cursing my existence, and wishing for my very death, as if I died, then their pain would vanish once, and for all. But I never understood why they said all this to an 8 year old boy like myself until one day, when Sirotobi Jiji told me everything, flashback, where is he? Where is Naruto? Sandame Hokage asked the nurses, as he walked around the hospital, looking for the young boy. I mean the boy is in room 302, Hokage-sama. One of the nurses answered, and caught herself before calling the boy demon, as that would incur the wrath of the mighty Hokage, and a pissed off Hokage was the last thing one would want to face. Thank you miss, and I would advise next time to make sure that not even a syllable of that word ever leaves your mouth, understood. The Hokage said sternly, glaring at the young nurse, who could only nervously nod under the glare of the mighty Hokage. The Hokage then headed for the room, and when he arrived, opened the door to reveal a young boy with unruly blonde hair, blue eyes, shirtless, on a hospital bed, with his head down. Are you alright, Naruto-kun? The Hokage asked. Yes I am, Sirotobi Ajison. Naruto replied solemnly without even looking up at the Hokage. Hmm, it looks like the Kaiubi healed him since according to Kakashi, he was covered with lacerations and bruises all over his body the Hokage noticed, as he remembered the captain's report of the incident, as he was the one who brought Naruto to the hospital. Tell me something, Naruto started to say, taking the Hokage out of his thoughts. What is it, Naruto-kun? The Hokage asked, but then his eyes slightly widened as he saw tears coming from Naruto. Why? Why do they treat me like this? Why do they hate me? Is it because of those pranks I pull? Whatever it is, I'll stop. Naruto said, nearly yelling, as he looked at the Hokage with his tear-covered face. It's not about what you did exactly, the Hokage said, sighing, as he got himself in a tough situation. Could he really tell the kid the truth, the truth that he was actually the container for the Kaiubi Kitsune that attacked the village eight years old? Then what is it? Please, you have to tell me. I can't take it anymore. Every night, I fear I may get attacked by them, and even when I walk down the streets, I'm scared I might get killed. Please, you have to tell me. Naruto practically begged the Hokage, pulling on the robes of the Hokage and crying on them. The Hokage was shocked by what the boy said and then sighed. He pats the boy on the head and then closes the door. I wished I did not have to tell you this now, but it looks like I have no choice. Naruto-kun, the reason why the villagers hate you is because you hold the Kaiubi Kitsune. The Hokage revealed it to the young boy. But that can't be, it was said that the Yandame defeated the demon fox. Naruto replied in disbelief. That was a lie, a lie concocted by the council and myself in order to make sure that your generation or future generations would not know about the truth and hate you as well for being the container of the Kaiubi. 
The Hokage replied. So, am I truly the demon? Is that why they hate me? Naruto asked, trembling at the truth he learned. No you are not, you are merely the container, the one that holds the demon fox at bay. The Hokage replied. But why me? Why did Yandame choose me? Naruto asked, not trembling anymore, but still a bit shocked by all this. Because of Naruto-kun, the Yandame could not impose this on any children of other families. The only one he was willing to use is his own child. The Hokage answered sagely. What? I'm Yandame's son. Naruto asked, gaping and shocked at this latest revelation. Yes you are. Your real name is Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto. Your father was Namikaze Minato, and your mother was Uzumaki Kishina. Your mother had died when she had you, and Minato decided to use his own son for this, since he could not put this burden on anyone else's family. He wanted you to grow as a hero, but obviously his plans were dashed away by the idiocy of the villagers. Saratobi explained, saying the last part with a hint of venom in his voice, as he could not believe the people of his own villagers would have this much hatred for a little boy. The Hokage that I admired the most was my father, Ajison. Can you tell me more about my father and mother? Naruto asked. Of course. The Hokage smiles. Then flashback, Saratobi Ajison told me a lot about my parents and how great people they were. That is when I decided to create a dream for myself, and one that I will do whatever it takes to achieve it, but first, I needed to get stronger. The academy that I was attending taught us basic things like Kawarimi, but in order for me to achieve my goals, I needed to do more than that. Normal POV. Knock knock. Come in. Saratobi asked, as he was filing paperwork. He looked up, as the person entered the room, and it was none other than Naruto, who had on a black shirt with the Whirlpool logo on the front, grey shorts, and blue shoes. Did you get yourself some new clothes, Naruto-kun? Saratobi asked, as he saw what the young Namikaze was wearing. Yep, used a hinge to trick the owners into letting me buy some new clothes. It's ironic that they live in a ninja village, and yet can't even recognize a hinge. That's not good for our village if half of them are morons. Naruto said nonchalantly. That boy is becoming a smartass more and more by the day, ever since I told him the stories of his father who ironically was also a smartass, as well. Saratobi thought, smiling at the boy's antics. Anyway, I need your help. Naruto asked, as he walked up to the. And what would that be, Naruto-kun? Saratobi asked. I want you to teach me advanced ninjutsu, not that crap that we are learning from the academy. Naruto said bluntly. I see, but I'm sorry Naruto-kun, but I can't teach you. Saratobi replied with a grin. Huh? And why is that? Don't tell me it's some stupid rule or something. Naruto asked. No it's not, but it's just that it would be unfair if you learned from the Hokage himself while others of your age did not. As Hokage, I have to be fair to everyone, and not just one person no matter how close I am to them, and besides, I already taught you Cage Bushin. But if you really do want to learn advanced ninjutsu, then I have someone in mind. Saratobi said. Bakashi was standing in front of a stone in the cemetery of Konoha like he does every day. Of course, one would have lost as many comrades as Kakashi had over the years. Would you be had a Kakashi? Naruto asked, as he entered the cemetery. Yes, and you must be Namika's Uzumaki Naruto, right? Kakashi asked, as he looked at the boy with both his eyes. How do you know about that? Naruto asked, surprised that someone knew his real full name. I was your father's student when he was a Kakashi replied. I see. This stone here, it's a stone of those killed in action, right? Would my father be there? Naruto asked, as he looked at the stone. Actually, he would be buried over there next to your mother. Kakashi said, and he walked up to where Minato and Kishina were buried. Dusan, Kasan. Naruto whispered. So kid, what did you want to talk to me about? I doubt you came all this way just for that. Kakashi asked. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Saratobi Ajison told me that you could train me in ninjutsu. Naruto said, as he remembered why he came up to the silver-haired ninja. He calls them Kakashi thought, as he heard the nickname Naruto had for the, so you want to learn advanced ninjutsu. But you're only in the academy. Kakashi replied. Yeah, but I have amazing chakra reserves and stamina, and also, I know this. Cage Bushin no jutsu. Naruto said, and then created five clones. Wow, that's amazing for someone who is still in the academy, but why do you want to learn advanced ninjutsu so badly? Kakashi asked Namikaze. Because I want to surpass my father and become the greatest Hokage that ever lived. Naruto boasted. That's a huge goal kid considering your dad was known as the strongest Hokage ever. But if you want to outdo him so badly, then perhaps I can be of some help. Here, hold this. Kakashi said, and then took out a white piece of paper and handed it to Naruto who grabbed it with his left hand. What the heck is that for? Naruto asked. I want you to channel your chakra into it. The reason for this is that it will help you determine what type of elemental ninjutsu you can perform. 
Kakashi answered. Elemental ninjutsu, you mean ninjutsu that are based on the elements of fire, wind, earth, water, and lightning, right? Naruto asked. Precisely. Kakashi replied. Okay, here I go. Naruto said, and then channeled his chakra into the paper, and then the paper split in two. Um, you have an elemental affinity toward wind. Well, I don't know any wind myself personally, and the leaf village is not known for wind ninjutsu, but I can help you with basic wind training. Kakashi said, and then grabbed a leaf, and gave it to Naruto. A leaf? You call that basic ninjutsu training? Naruto asked. Shut up and listen. The reason why I am giving you this leaf is for you to cut it with your wind chakra. By doing that, you'll be able to say what Kakashi began to say only to be interrupted by Naruto. Done. Naruto said, as he showed the two pieces of the leaf to Kakashi whose eyes bulged out. You finished already? What kind of academy student are you? Kakashi asked. What? Was this supposed to be hard? Naruto asked, confused at the Jounin's reaction. For an academy student, yes it was supposed to be hard. Kakashi replied. Then it seems the standards have plummeted then. Anyway, thanks for the elemental affinity thing since now I can come up with better. Naruto said, as he started to walk away. That boy he's just like you, Minato-sensei. Kakashi thought. Naruto was on his way back to his apartment when he suddenly heard a girl's screams. He rushed down and saw that a girl with pink hair was getting picked on by some girls who held her book in their hands and forced her to get it from them. Look at that girl. So weak and such a huge forehead. One of the girls said. Please give me back my book. The pink-haired girl cried out. Or else what? You're going to try to attack us with your big forehead. Another of the girls asked. Um, Medical Ninjutsu 101. Sounds like an interesting book. Naruto said, as he was holding the book in his hands. H how did you get that book? The leader of the girls asked. I grabbed it from your hand while you weren't looking, duh. I mean, did you expect me to ask something? Naruto said nonchalantly. You've got some nerves, kid. The leader growled. So you can make coherent sentences after all. I thought you were just some big mentally challenged brute. Naruto said, causing the leader to flush in anger. W who is this boy? Sakura thought. Now leave or else. Cage bush and no jutsu. Naruto said, and a horde of clones popped in, scaring the girls and making them leave. He smirked and then walked up to the girl and handed her the book. Thank you very much. Sakura said with a smile. Now that I look at it, your forehead is huge. Naruto said, causing the girl to flinch and her eyes to water until she felt a sensation on her forehead and saw that Naruto had kissed it, but it also looks very kissable. Naruto said with a wide grin, causing the girl to blush. By the way, did you get a book from the library? Naruto asked. Yes I did. Actually, I was on my way there, do you want to go with me? Sakura asked, her face now red, as she still didn't recover from her daze. Sure. Naruto said with a foxy grin, causing Sakura to turn into color that was humanly impossible. Man, this trip was worth it. Now I have enough books to get started on my training. Arigato who what's your name? Naruto asked the girl as they returned from the library. Haruno Sakura. Sakura replied. Arigato, Sakura-chan. Naruto grinned. No problem and thank you for saving me from those bullies Sakura said, but then trailed off as she did not know his name either. Oh yeah I forgot, I never introduced myself. The name's Namek is Naruto. Naruto said sheepishly. Well, this is where I live. I guess I'll see you some other time. Sakura said as she arrived on the doorsteps of her home. Then I'll see you tomorrow at the academy then. Naruto said. Wait, you go to the academy? Sakura asked. Of course I do. I just don't show up unless what we're learning is interesting, which is only about 5% of the time. Naruto answered. Oh, well then I'll see you whenever you come by. Sakura said, and then opened the door to her house, and closed it. For her, I might just show up in class tomorrow. Naruto thought before heading off. Okay class, calm down. It's time for a row call so please say something when I say your name Aruka said, and then started to go down the list, Namika's Naruto Aruka said. Here. Naruto said, and everyone turned to see the young Namika's lounging on his seat. You actually came to class. Oh thank you Kami, what a miracle. Haruka said, as he got down on his knees, and fake tears came out of his eyes, causing everyone in the classroom to sweat drop. Don't get your panties in a bunch. I only came here, as a favor for someone. Naruto said. Hey, did he come to the academy for me? Sakura asked, as she looked up from her book. Naruto you finally come back. A voice said, and everyone turned to see Sasuke who was grinning like crazy at Naruto, and cracking his knuckles. Oh, hey Sasuke. Naruto said, greeting the young Uchiha. Don't hey me. You know what time it is, right? Sasuke asked. Oh yeah, it's that time. Naruto said, as he understood what the Achiha meant. What do they mean by that time? A brown-haired boy asked Shikamaru. 
It's basically an eternal combat between Sasuke and Naruto. The premise is simple. If Sasuke can punch Naruto just once, then he wins and makes Naruto do his homework. If Sasuke can't punch Naruto in one try, then he has to buy Naruto ramen. Shikamaru explained. That doesn't seem so bad. The brown-haired boy said. Not bad. Are you out of your mind, you fool? Chaoji yelled. What's so bad about the consequences for either one? The brown-haired boy asked, confused. It's not bad if Sasuke wins, but if he loses, it's bad for him. You see, Naruto has an insatiable appetite for ramen, which is 100 hundred times worse than my hunger for anything. Chaoji said, making the boy gulp since Chaoji's appetite was legendary among the academy. And on top of that, it has been reported that Naruto eats on average 10 bowls of ramen each day. Now multiply that by the amount of money they each cost, and this is how much Sasuke has to spend every time he loses, and so far, he's lost 10 times in a row. Shikamaru added on. Oh my god that's insane. But if it costs that much then why doesn't he just quit? The brown-haired boy then asked. Because of Sasuke's pride and nature. Sasuke cannot admit defeat no matter what, and on top of that, Sasuke loves to fight anyone, and thus cannot bring himself to refuse such an opportunity. Shikamaru said. So in reality, Naruto is using Sasuke's hunger for fighting to his own advantage. How cruel. The brown-haired boy said. Giba, do you have the commentary ready? Chaoji asked. Yes I do, and, as of right now, Sasuke is tensing up, ready to strike while Naruto is sitting comfortably in his chair, awaiting Sasuke's attack. Ha, Sasuke throws his book bag at Naruto who catches, but waits a minute. That was only a distraction to allow Sasuke to get in close for the kill. Will he actually pull it off Kiba asked, as everyone was on edge. Murata, got you. Sasuke yelled, as he threw a right hook, and smirked, as he connected only for Naruto to turn into, I'm Aruka sensei Sasuke gasped. W what happened? Haruka asked, dazed, and nearly knocked out from the blow. Ouch. It seems Naruto pulled at the last minute, switching places with Haruka sensei Another tough loss for Sasuke. Will he ever recover from another crushing defeat? Kiba commentated. Irisai. Sasuke yelled at Kiba. Nice work there, Sasuke. Naruto asked, as he was on Haruka's desk. I hate you. Sasuke growled. That's not what you said last night in bed, Sasuke-chan. Naruto smirked, making the yaoi fangirls blush and squeal. I'll rip your balls off. Sasuke ordered only to be held back by Kiba, Chaoji, and Shikamaru. Later, Naruto and Sasuke are eating ramen at Ichiraku Ramen. Aw oh, come on Sasuke. You're the one who agreed to this, and besides, you can consider this as a part of your shinobi training. Naruto said to the extremely pissed Ichiha who literally had an aura of rage around him, scaring bystanders. By the way, you should cool down because you're scaring Aim chan and Tuchi-san. Naruto said. Hey, devil. A.M. and her father whispered, extremely scared of the Achiha. You're right about that, and besides, it's much more fun than what we learn in class, but be warned, I will get that hit if it's the last thing I do before graduating. Sasuke said, smirking, as he cooled down. Whatever you say. Naruto replied. See you whenever you come back to class, Naruto. Sasuke said, as he headed off. Naruto finished his meal and turned around to leave only to bump into Sakura and falling down on top of her, causing the girl to blush furiously. Well, this is an interesting position we're in huh, Sakura-chan. Naruto grinned and then helped her get off the ground. Omen, I should have watched where I was going. Sakura said as she got her books. Did you want to see me for something? Naruto asked. Well, I was wondering if you wanted to come to the library with me. I was going to review what we've learned in class today and also get more books. Sakura asked, blushing. I didn't really pay attention to what Aruka sensei said since I already knew about it, but I wouldn't mind going with you, Sakura-chan. Naruto said with a grin, and then the two headed off. Four years later, present time, normal POV. Alright class, today is the Genin exam, and this year's exam will be on Bunshin no. When I call your name, please come to the room next door so that Aruka can begin your test. Mizuki, one of the teachers of the class, instructed, Man, this is going to be such a troublesome test. Hey Naruto, what do you think? Shikamaru asked the young blonde who now was wearing a white jacket with a red spiral on the back and red flames, dark orange shirt, black shorts, black shoes, and silver fingerless gloves with white swirls on them. I think the best thing for you to do is worry about yourself, Shikamaru. I mean for God's sake, the ground itself can move more than you can in a month. Naruto said. Damn that guy and his smart mouth. I'm so depressed. Shikamaru said as he sat down in the corner. It's okay, Shikamaru. It's all okay. Chaoji said, comforting his friend. Naruto Sasuke whispered as he was dressed in a blue shirt with the Achiha fan on the back, white shorts, bandages on his feet, and blue shoes. He also had blood on his knuckles. 
You almost missed the test, Sasuke, and what's up with the blood on your knuckles? Haruka asked. Oh, that. It's from a group of 10 bullies I beat up on the way here. They bumped into me and pissed me off. Sasuke explained. You beat the crap out of people for bumping into you? Hiroka thought with a sweat drop behind his head. But today finally be the day Sasuke lands a punch on Naruto. Kiba said as his dog barked. Here I come, Naruto. Sasuke said and then poofed up, revealing him to be a cage bushin. Shit. I forgot he learned KB from me during our training sessions. Naruto thought. I won this time. Sasuke said, as he was right behind Naruto, and struck him with a roundhouse kick, only for Naruto to poof away. So Naruto was a clone too everyone exclaimed. Good thing I thought of creating a clone, as backup just in case. Well, it looks like you've missed your last chance, Sasuke. Naruto said, as he entered the classroom, and then sat down next to Sakura. You really shouldn't do that to Sasuke, Naruto-kun. Sakura said. But it's so much fun, Sakura-chan. Naruto replied with a grin. I'm such a loser, Sasuke said, heavily depressed, as he banged his head on his desk multiple times. You tried your best, Sasuke-kun. Hinata thought, as she looked at the Uchiha air. Next, Namek is Naruto. Mizuki called out, and Naruto stood up and headed for the room where Ruka was waiting for him. Okay Naruto, the Hokage asked me to give you a different test. Hiruka said. Oh really? Naruto asked, as he raised his eyebrow. So instead of the usual test, we will be tested for each style. You pass all three, and you receive your headband, okay. Hiruka explained. No prob. Naruto nodded. First up is. All you have to do is show me a technique. Hiruka says. Naruto went through a number of seals, and then in an instant, Hiruka found himself falling from the sky. Oh. Kai. Kai. Hiruka yelled out, and then cancelled. That was amazing, Naruto. Alright, next up is ninjutsu, which should be easier since it is your strongest style. Hiruka said after he recovered from this. Naruto does a seal, and then vanishes in the wind, and is instantly behind Iruka. So, how do you like my Kei's Shunshin no Jutsu, wind body flicker technique, Iruka sensei Naruto asked with a slight grin. Not only did he master the Shunshin no Jutsu, but he also created an elemental version of it. I knew Naruto was extremely talented in ninjutsu, but not this talented. Iruka thought. He then sighed and turned around to meet Naruto, very good Naruto. Now, the last one is Tojutsu, and all you have to do is fight me so I can see how good your Tojutsu is. Iruka explained. Naruto nodded, and while Iruka got into a traditional fighting stance, Naruto just put his hands in his pocket, confusing Iruka. Are you sure you want to stand like that, Naruto? Iruka asked, grinning. I'm sure, sensei. Naruto replied with a somewhat cold, causing Iruka to flinch. Iruka then charges toward Naruto and starts to throw a left punch, but then was about to switch to a right punch when suddenly, Naruto grabbed his right arm to flip him into the air and into the ground. W what happened? Naruto, how did you do that? Iruka asked, confused at what his student did. It's simple, Iruka sensei I saw your right arm slightly move, indicating that you were going to attack with it instead, and your first attack was a feint. Despite the speed and strength difference between the two of us, my ability to deduce your attack enabled me to react faster than you and thus counter you. Naruto explained, as if it wasn't such a big deal. I forgot that not only is Naruto a smart ass, he's also very intelligent. Hiruka thought. Well, I don't think I need to continue this test then. As of now, you are now a genin, Naruto. Hiruka says as he gets back up. He then gets one of the headbands from the table in the room and then gives it to Naruto, who wraps it around his left arm. After the exam, you want to go to Ichiraku and get some ramen, Naruto? Haruka asked. Absolutely. Naruto answered with a foxy grin. Later, Haruka and Naruto are at Ichiraku ramen shop, waiting for their ramen. I'm so happy you became a genin, Naruto-kun. The ramen shop's daughter, A.M., said with a smile. Thank you, A.M.-chan. It means a lot to me coming from you. Naruto replied with a beautiful smile, causing A.M. to blush. He may not look like it, but Naruto is a true charmer. If it wasn't for his sarcastic wit and bluntness toward people, he would have had a bigger fan club than Ichiha Sasuke. Hiruka thought, as he sweat dropped from his former student's charms. Here you go, two Maizo ramen, in the house thanks to Naruto's graduation. Tuchi, the owner of the ramen shop, said, as he hands the ramen to the two men. You didn't have to do that sir. Besides, you are running a business, and you need all the money you can get. Naruto protested, not wanting to get the ramen for free. Don't worry about it, consider this as a favor for one of my best customers. Tuchi replied. Thank you very much. Naruto said humbly and then proceeded to eat the ramen. Iruka. Iruka. A person yelled. When Iruka turned around, he saw a brown-haired man heading toward him. What is it? Iruka asked, surprised. It's Mizuki. 
he stole the Forbidden Scrolls from the Hokage Tower. They answered frantically, shocking both Naruto and Aruka. Alright, I'll be right there. Aruka said and nodded before heading off. Aruka sensei, let me come with you. Naruto asked. I appreciate the help of Naruto, but this is a matter beyond your hands. I will not allow a genin to be mixed in these things. Haruka said, rejecting the offer. You must let me come with you. Mizuki, by stealing from the Hokage, has betrayed the code of this village and thus needs to be punished. If I am to become Hokage, then I need to prove myself, and finding Mizuki is the best way to do so, as a ninja of this village. Naruto said with a tone of one that will not take no for an answer. Naruto Aruka says, shocked at the vigor his usually calm student displayed, and then sighed, alright Naruto, you can come with me. Haruka finally said, defeated. The two then head off in search of Mizuki, who meanwhile was running in the forest. Yes, finally the scroll is mine. With this, I'll be able to gain immense power and crush all those who stand in my way. Ha 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 ha. Mizuki laughed as he continued to run through the forest before he was then kicked in the face by Aruka, who intercepted him along with Naruto. Hey Mizuki, here's a tip. Laughing to yourself out loud will make it easier to find you, and on top of that, it makes you look retarded. Naruto said with a smirk. You're not going anywhere Mizuki. Haruka said. Haruka. Mizuki says, but then sees Naruto nearby and growls, Naruto. It was no secret that Mizuki loathed Naruto for carrying the demon fox and tried to fail him multiple times, but no matter how many times he tried, he just could not rattle the young man and that irritated Mizuki even more. Great job figuring out this shortcut, Naruto. Haruka grinned and gave his thumbs up to his student. It was nothing, sensei. Just the most logical choice. Naruto said deadpan, and you, what kind of dumbass actually steals from the Hokage himself? Geez, no wonder I never learned anything from you, Mizuki sensei. Naruto said, saying the sensei part sarcastically. Iris I, Gaki. Mizuki yelled. Now Mizuki, drop the scrolls now and come with us. Haruka asked the blue haired. Never and besides, I can't drop them since I'm not here. Mizuki grinned and then poofed away. The Naruto and Aruka both exclaimed, shocked. He must have created one when you hit him so he can fool us and hide away. Naruto said. But where did he go? Haruka asked as the two looked around. This is bad. This forest allows him a perfect hiding place and if I remember, there was a huge shuriken on that Bushin's back, which means he does have one as well and can use this forest as a way to throw it without being detected. Naruto analyzed. He then suddenly felt something coming his way and turned around to see a large shuriken heading his way and thus ducked to avoid it. That was close. Naruto whispered. Naruto, get out of the way. Another one is heading your way. Haruka yelled and Naruto turned his head and saw another coming his way. Another one? But he only has one. Unless he must have created a replication of it and threw the first one and then threw the second one as soon as I dodged the first one, thus putting me in a horrible position to defend myself. Naruto thought. I won't be able to dodge it. Is this truly the end for me, am I going to die without reaching my goals Naruto said mentally, closed his eyes and braced himself for the shuriken, but the blow never came and when he opened his eyes, he saw Aruka hunched over him with a shuriken on his back. No Aruka sensei. Naruto says in disbelief and shock at what just happened. You must think what I just did was stupid wasn't it? That it wasn't the most logical choice, huh? But you have to understand something about Naruto. The reason I did this was because I believe in you. Haruka began to explain. Believe in me? Naruto repeated, yes, I believe in you, Naruto. I believe that you will become Hokage because I see one in you and us, as the older generation, have to protect the dreams of the next generation, no matter what the cost. And also, you've become the little brother I never had, and what kind of older brother would I be if I let my son die without even reaching his dreams? Aruka said with a smile and coughed some blood. How touching Aruka is. Too bad you did it for the demon boy. Mizuki grinned as he came out from his hiding place. Pathetic really, that he decided to sacrifice his life for someone as worthless as you, but then again, this is what happens when you are a sentimental fool. Mizuki grinned darkly. How dare you hurt Aruka sensei. Naruto growled as he put Aruka's body on the ground and then pulled out the shuriken from the teacher's back and threw it aside. There are two types of people I hate Mizuki. People that treat others unfairly and traitors and you Mizuki are the latter. Naruto says, glaring at the teacher with a cold glare. Oh, and? Mizuki asked with a cocky tone. My dream, no ambition, is to become Hokage and also revive the Namika's clan as its leader, and to do that, I have to prove myself as a ninja, and I will do so by crushing you, Mizuki, until you no longer retain a human form. Naruto shouted in pure anger, quit talking big, demon. There's no way you can beat me. 
Mizuki laughed. That's what you think Mizuki is, but you're wrong. I will defeat you. Naruto replied. Then bring it on. Mizuki hollered. Page Bunshin no Jutsu. Naruto whispers, and then does a hand seal, and over a hundred clones appear. What? What's going on? Mizuki asked, frightened at the number of clones. Here's your punishment Mizuki. Naruto says, and then he sends his clones all on Mizuki, who ends up being beaten to a pulp. Haruka sensei Haruka sensei Haruka heard, as he woke up, and saw Naruto next to him. Naruto? You're alright. Haruka asked his student. I'm alright, sensei, though I wouldn't say the same for you, you're still wounded from that shuriken. Naruto replied. It's okay, but what about Mizuki? Haruka asked, as he wondered about the traitor. He's been incapacitated for right now. Naruto answered, and Aruka looked up to Naruto's direction, and saw the pile of flesh that was Mizuki, and winced, and made a mental note to never anger the young blonde. Naruto, it looks like you will have a bright future ahead of you. Haruka thought, as he looked at Naruto. Alright, sensei. Let's go, we have to bring the scroll back to Jiji, and get you to the hospital. Naruto says, as he puts Aruka on his shoulders. No matter what, I'm very proud of you, Naruto. Haruka says. Arigato, Haruka sensei. Naruto says, a little embarrassed, and then adds mentally, and thank you for believing in me. Ring. 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 The alarm sounded off, and Naruto shut the alarm off. Well, time to start the day. I really hope nothing stupid happens. Naruto said, as he got off his bed, revealing a muscular chest with scars on it, as he was only dressed in grey boxers. He goes, and takes a shower, and then puts on his clothes, and makes a cereal dish. He then makes a small prayer and eats it and afterwards heads out with his headband on his right arm. He continues to walk until he arrives at the clearing where the stone that was created for heroes and those killed in action was located. However, he was not the only one there as Hada Kakashi was there as well. Yo Kakashi, what's up? Naruto said as he greeted the man. Yo Naruto, came here to see your parents. Kakashi asked. Yep, pretty much. Naruto said as he walked up to his father and mother's graves and closed his eyes. Odison I'm finally a genin, and soon I will meet my team and be one step sooner to my goals. I will make you proud, don't worry. Naruto said mentally. He then opened his eyes and then started to leave for the academy, and, as he did, Kakashi was looking at him. I wonder how interesting it will be to teach sensei's son. Kakashi thought, as he reminisced about his meeting with the Hokage. Flashback, so this is Naruto's files, huh? Kakashi said, as he was looking through the files of Naruto that the Hokage gave him. Yes they are. From when you met him four years ago, you may have noticed how he is exactly like his father, correct? The Hokage asked, as he was smoking from his pipe. Yeah, he's a genius, and a smart ass like his dad alright. Kakashi replied, as he remembered how Minato used to act. And not only that, but like his father, he possesses the same wind affinity, and has a high talent for ninjutsu, even being able to perform a case shunshin no jutsu. And finally, he sent Mizuki to the hospital in a coma. The Hokage explained the last part with a smile, as he was proud of the young blonde's achievements. I knew about the Mizuki incident, but I did not know he already knew Shunshin no Jutsu, and even made an elemental version of it. He is truly like his father when it comes to ninjutsu. Kakashi said, quite surprised at the blonde, but then that should not be a surprise, considering that the child had already learned the basic exercises of wind affinity at age 8. So, I decided to put him on your team so that you can help him, and I also decided to put Ichiha and Haruno on his team, as well. The Hokage said. Ichiha and Haruno? Are you trying to make my team a well-rounded team? Kakashi asks. You can say that. With Naruto's high aptitude in ninjutsu, Sasuke's in tojutsu, and Sakura's in jinjutsu, they can not only learn from each other very well, but pretty much can be a force to be reckoned with. Also, it has been reported to me by Aruka that all three of them are very good friends, especially Sasuke and Naruto who are rivals as well. The Hokage explained, this looks like it's going to be fun. Kakashi says with a smile that was shown on his mask. Then flashback, okay Kasan, I'm leaving now to find out who my team is. I'll be back later this afternoon. Sakura said, as she then closed the door and then headed off. On the way, she met Ino, her best friend who was leaving her house as well. So Sakura, ready for our big day? Ino asked. I don't know, I did review the entire curriculum of our entire four-year program, so I should be ready for the team meetings today. Sakura answered, making Ino sweat drop at her answer and look at her quizzically. What is wrong with Ino-chan? Sakura asked. You do realize that we are only going to meet our teams, right Sakura? Ino asked. I know I know, but I just wanted to be ready for anything. Sakura replied sheepishly. Just admit that you just wanted to read for the heck of it, bookworm. Ino grinned. I guess so. 
Sakura replied, scratching the back of her head, but then flinched when Ino got real close to her. What's going on? Sakura asked. So Sakura, when are you and Naruto going to go to second base? Ino asked with a smirk. Ino. We're not like that. Sakura replied with a reddened face. Oh please, everyone in the hall school knows you guys love each other and have been dating for four years now. Ino said. And what about you, huh? Aren't you dating someone right now? Sakura asked, trying to change the subject. Please girl, Yamanaka Ino is Kanoha's number one single woman and tends to stay that way for a long time. Now back to you and Naruto. Ino said as she flipped the subject back to Sakura and Naruto. Ino. Sakura moaned as she knew her friend would not let her off the hook that easily. Achiha Sasuke put on his blue shirt with the Achiha logo on the back, white shorts, blue shoes, headband, brown backpack, and fingerless gloves before heading out of his apartment. Nice job on becoming a genin, Sasuke. The voice of a man said behind Sasuke. Why are you here? I thought you were going around, gathering information and techniques. Sasuke replied without ever turning his head around to look at the man. Don't be that cold, Sasuke. Can't someone congratulate their pupil? The man asked. Whatever, I'm going. Sasuke said smirking as he headed off. That kid has no respect for his elders. The man said, chuckling. Naruto entered the classroom where most of his classmates were already sitting in their seats. He then walked to the far right row of the class and sat on an empty chair. Few minutes later, Sasuke entered the classroom and sat down next to Naruto and immediately, everyone began to tense up. How cute. You're sitting next to me even though you can't hit me anymore. Naruto grinned. I hate you. Sasuke said, glaring at the boy. That's not what you said during our passionate lovemaking last night, Sasuke Yuke. Naruto chuckled, causing the yaoi fangirls to once again squeal with hearts in their eyes. Shut the fuck up Naruto, and you girls mind your own business. Sasuke roared. Come on, lighten up Sasuke. In a few minutes, we're going to go to our team so we can begin our days at Genin's. The least you could do is become nicer. Naruto said. Like hell I will. Just like you, I have a reputation to uphold. Sasuke said. What do you mean like me, and what reputation are you talking about? Naruto asked. Just like you have your reputation for being a smart ass, I have my reputation for being a badass, and badasses are not nice. Sasuke growled. So that's your reputation. I thought your reputation was that of a repressed emo homosexual. Naruto said with a grin. Just ignore what he said, just ignore it. Sasuke thought as he was telling him so in order to control his temper. Sakura-chan. Naruto said, as he saw Sakura come into the classroom along with Ino. Hello, Naruto-kun. Sakura said with a small blush, as she sat next to Naruto, oh, hi Sasuke. Sakura said, waving to the Achiha heir who simply nodded back at her. Alright class. First off, I want to congratulate you for graduating and becoming genins. From this day on, you are the official ninja of this village and will need to go on missions to prove yourself to this village. Every year, when children become genins, they are put in teams of three, and the same applies to this year as well. I will thus read off your name and the name of your teammates and your instructor who you will meet later today. Haruka explained to the classroom. Team 1 will be Akira Sanada, Yuri Hashigawa, Jin Kazama Team 2 Aruka said as he started to read off the team. Team 7 will be composed of Wow, I can't believe what I'm seeing, but anyway. Team 7 will be composed of Namika's Naruto, Haruno Sakura, and Ichiha Sasuke. Your sensei will be Hada Kakashi. Haruka said, causing a shock to nearly everyone, as everyone in the classroom knew Naruto and Sasuke were tops in the class, and Sakura was near the tops among the Kinoichi. Must be the old man's doing, definitely gotta be it, not that I mind though. Naruto thought, as he grinned. I don't mind being with those two, but I don't want to hold them back, especially Naruto-kun. Sakura said in her mind. Don't worry about it, we won't hold them back, Shanaro. Inner Sakura said to comfort herself. I could care less who is in my team, as long as I get the chance to go on missions and get stronger. Though with these two, I won't be held back though I wish she was on my team. Sasuke also contemplated in his mind. The mate will be compassed of Inuzuka Kiba, Hayuga Hinata, and Abram Shino. The instructor is Yuhi Kuranai. Team 10 will be compassed of Nara Shikamaru, Yamanaka Ino, and Akamichi Chaoji. Your instructor is Saratobi Asuma. Haruka said, and suddenly, a groan could be heard from Ino. Damn it, why do I have to be stuck with these two useless buffoons? Ino yelled out and pointed to both teammates. That's because the teams were arranged this way, and that's that, Yamanaka. So I suggest you be quiet and get used to them. Haruka answered sternly, shutting the girl down. Life is not fair, Ino said, slumped on her desk. Like I'm going to enjoy this any better myself. Your voice can probably wake up the dead, and having to deal with this for a long while is going to be so troublesome. Shikamaru countered. What did you just say, you lazy ass? 
Ino roared. Ino. Haruka said, causing the girl to shut up and Shikamaru to snicker while Chaoji was eating his chips. As the hours went by, the instructors came to pick up their teams until there was only one team left, Team 7, who were not pleased with their sensei being late. In fact, Sasuke was about to kill someone. Damn it. How long does it take for me to get here? Sasuke yelled angrily. He then turned to Naruto and had a manic look on his face, Naruto Sasuke began to say, Don't even think about it Sasuke. I'm not going to fight you. Naruto said, crashing down on the Ichiha's plans. That's it, I'm going to eat now. Sasuke said, as he then took out a bento box from his book bag and started to eat from it. Sasuke, that bento box looks so cute. Sakura said, as she noticed his well-made box. Yes Sasuke, who made it for you, your girlfriend. Naruto snickered, but then both Sakura and Naruto were surprised when Sasuke nearly choked on his food upon hearing the word girlfriend and even blushed. Okay Sasuke, what's her name? Naruto asked grinning as he wanted to hear the juicy info. Naruto-kun, I don't think it's right to ask him such a question. Sakura said. Komian, Sakura-chan. What's wrong with me, as a teammate no less, wanting to know the name of Sasuke's girlfriend? Naruto replied. Shut up, Naruto. I'm not telling you anything. Sasuke said. You're no fun. Naruto pouted anyway, this sensei better come quick or else I'm shoving a kunai up his ass. Naruto said. I'm sure he has a good explanation as to why he is late anyway. Sakura said. That him sensei better get his ass here right now or he's dead, Shanaro. Inner Sakura, on the other hand, said. Be better or else he's toast. Sasuke growled as he returned to his seat. But you. Someone must be talking about me, hopefully a pretty lady Kakashi said as he sneezed on his way toward the classroom. He opens the door and was about to greet his team, but then was met by three young genins glaring at him, and if looks could kill, Kakashi would be dead by now. Okay. My name is Hata Kakashi, and I'm your sensei. Sorry if I'm late, but I had to help an old lady escape from a burning building. Kakashi said as he introduced himself. Really? You had 3 hours and 20 minutes to come up with an excuse, and this is the best you could come up. My god, you suck. Not only do you come late, you can't even come up with a decent excuse, and what's worse, it wasn't even funny. What are we going to do with you huh, Kakashi sensei? Naruto said and then shook his head in disappointment. Alright then, team, meet me on the roof now. Kakashi said, ignoring Naruto's comment, and then poofed away. The genins then walked up all the way to the roof where their sensei was waiting for them. Alright team, we're first going to start this meeting with introductions. Kakashi says. Introductions. Sakura repeated, confused. Yeah, yeah, introductions. You basically tell me your likes, dislikes, hobbies, and goals. Kakashi explained. Well, since you were late and we know shit about you, how about you start first sensei? Sasuke asked with a smirk. Looks like we got a potty mouth here. Anyway, my name is Hata Kakashi. My likes, dislikes, and hobbies are none of your business, and my goals are also none of your business. Kakashi said. Wow, that was the most incredible speech I have ever heard in my entire life. Nothing short of amazing. Naruto said, as he even clapped his hands a couple of times. Note to self, go to a therapist in order to prepare for a barrage of sarcastic insults at the hands of a mini version of your sensei. Kakashi thought. Alright, let's start with you blondie. Kakashi said. That was actually clever, Kakashi sensei. There is hope for you after all. Naruto said, causing his sensei to glare at him before he resumed, my full name is Namikaz Uzumaki Naruto. My hobbies are training, ramen, Sakura-chan, my parents, and pissing people off. My dislikes are traitors, people that treat others unfairly and evil. My hobbies are to create new ninjutsu techniques, read, and come up with new ways to piss people off. My goals, not my ambition, is to become the strongest Hokage to ever live, create a new clan for my family, and become Kanoha's most legendary smartass. Naruto said, finishing with a grin. We're doomed. Kakashi thought. Alright, your next blossom. Kakashi says to Sakura. My name is Haruno Sakura. My hobbies are learning about medicine, plants, and Naruto-kun, Sakura says, and slightly looks at Naruto before continuing. My dislikes are unfair people, bullies. My hobbies are growing new plants, reading books, and helping out with the kids at the orphanage. My goal is to become a strong Kinoichi and medic nin. Sakura finished. It seems she has a crush on our Namikas, but at least she shows a lot more focus on her Kinoichi training than most girls her age do Kakashi thought. Alright, your last, Ichiha. Kakashi said to Sasuke. My name is Ichiha Sasuke. My hobbies are fighting and learning new fighting styles. My dislikes are annoying people, weaklings. My hobby is training, beating the shit out of people that piss me off, Sasuke said, only to be interrupted by Naruto, which is basically 97% of all of Konoha. 
Naruto said. Shut up Naruto. Anyway, my ambition is to become the strongest Uchiha that ever lived and also revive my clan. Sasuke finished. Very interesting, though underneath it all, one can still see his need for revenge, but it's nice to see he has not allowed it to completely rule his life. Kakashi said mentally. Alright guys, thank you for your introductions. Now, what we are going to do next is going to be lots of fun. Kakashi grinned. What do you mean by fun, sensei? Sakura asked, a little worried. What I mean is that we are going to have ourselves a little training and survival exercise, just the four of us. Kakashi revealed. But we already did something like this back in the academy, sensei. Sakura said. On top of that, why is this necessary when you already know our capabilities from our academy reports? Naruto added. And besides, shouldn't we be starting on a mission instead of wasting on some stupid exercises? Sasuke asked. The reason for this is that these exercises you took in the academy were only child's play compared to this one. This time, you will be up against me, in the real world. And also, out of the 27 graduates, only 9 will become genins, while the others are sent back, thus giving this entire test a 66 dropout rate. Kakashi explained grimly, leaving the genin shocked. That's insane, Sakura said. Now you got me interested in sensei. Sasuke grinned. So I will determine if you are worthy or not of becoming ninjas tomorrow at the training grounds. Bring your ninja equipment and meet at 5 am. Kakashi instructed and was about to leave when, bullshit. Naruto blurted out. What do you mean by Naruto? Kakashi asked. There's no way in hell you're showing up at 5 am. I mean, you couldn't even come to a 12 o'clock meeting on time. Naruto said. Just come at 5 am, I'll be on time I promise. Kakashi sighed before leaving. I know he's lying for sure, but still, this is the chance I've been waiting for. Naruto thought. I can't let the others down. I have to pass this test so I can finally become a Kinoichi and prove that I'm worth something to her. Sakura thought. There's no way I'm failing this test. Sasuke thought as he shook with anticipation. Later, we see Naruto walking down the street heading for his apartment when he suddenly stopped. Then, a young boy with brown hair and a ponytail, and wearing a yellow shirt, beige pants, blue scarf, and a headgear came out of the fence, as he was hiding in a cloak. Holy crap, it's a midget. Oh no, it's just Konohimaru. Naruto said in mock surprise. As witty, as ever, Naruto and Iki. Konohimaru said. Spill a kid, what do you want now? Naruto asked. I want you to teach that Warwick no jutsu technique you used on my old man the other day. Konohimaru exclaimed. Oh fuck me. Listen kid, I don't have time to teach you such a stupid technique. Naruto said, as he remembered that Konohimaru had stumbled upon him using that technique. The Hokage had wanted him to take a serious pose for his picture of identification, but Naruto refused and in the end performed the technique to disorient the perverted only for Konohimaru to walk into it. Why do you want to learn it anyway? Naruto asked. Because you were able to defeat the Hokage with it easily. With that technique, I'll be able to finally beat my old man. Konohimaru answered. You beat the Hokage? Naruto asked before he started to laugh, yeah, that'll happen when hell freezes over. Naruto said, as he continued to laugh. I'm serious. I am going to beat that old man. Konohimaru said. Alright alright, don't get all pissy on me. Come with me, I'll teach you. Naruto said, and Konohimaru quickly nodded and walked along with him. The two then finally stopped in front of a woman's only hot spring. Naruto and Nikki, why are we stopping in front of a hot spring for women only? Konohimaru asked. You'll see. Come on. Naruto said, and the young boy followed. They were able to sneak past the register and entered one of the hot springs, catching the women by surprise. What the heck do you think you're doing, perverts? One of the women asked. We're conducting research for a technique and thus we need one of you to show us your body so we can memorize important information. Naruto said bluntly. No way. Get out of here now. The woman screamed, enraged. Listen ladies, the faster we do this, the faster we can leave, and how about this, as a bonus, I leave and give you guys a massage for free. Naruto said. Wow Naruto and Nikki. I have never seen things like this before. Konohimaru said with his face all red. Yeah, and I can't believe how much money I made with these messages and also the phone numbers I got. Naruto said, smirking. So, am I going to learn it now? Konohimaru asked. Yep. Naruto said, as they then stopped in a training field, now all you have to do is transform into a woman using what you have seen in the hot springs, okay? Naruto said. Okay, Henge. Konohimaru said. Where is he? Where is young master Konohimaru? Ibisu thought, as he was looking for Konohimaru everywhere. I knew I should have never peed while watching over him. He's probably with that smart-mouthed nine-tails brat. Ibisu thought. It's official Konohimaru, you have no talent whatsoever, as a ninja. Naruto said looking bored as the boy had yet to create a perfect transformation. It's not my fault. 
Every time I try to do it, I lose my concentration and mess up. Konohamaru complained. Look, I'll show you once okay. Naruto said before transforming into a young naked blonde girl with clouds covering her privates and pigtails and whisker marks. He then undid the. See, not so hard is it? Naruto said. There you are, Konohamaru. Ibisu said as he arrived and it seems you're with that dangerous boy here. Ibisu added. Who the hell are you? Naruto asked. My name is Ibisu and I'm an elite teacher. I was assigned by the Hokage himself to train his honorable grandson. Ibisu said with a hint of pride. Stop calling me that. And besides, I'm training with Naruto and Nikki. Konohamaru said. And what can that boy possibly teach you that I can't? Ibisu asked with a smirk. This technique. Horik no jutsu, sexy no jutsu. Konohamaru said and transformed into a young woman with brown hair and was totally naked and covered by smoke to hide her privates. Such a foolish technique will not work against me. Ibisu said, smirking. No way, why didn't it work? Konohamaru asked as he undid the. Step aside and let me show you how it's done, kid. Naruto said. He then created a mass amount of shadow clones and then he and all of the clones transformed into their sexy no jutsu forms. We call it the harem no jutsu. So Ibisu-san, what do you think? Naruto and his clones all said as they winked at him and then started to rub on him. Ibisu lost control and then was knocked high into the sky by a massive nosebleed. The Naruto's grinned and then Naruto undid all of his clones and returned to normal. That was so awesome Naruto and Nikki. Can you teach me that too? Konohamaru asked. Sorry kid, I gotta go. Besides, how the heck are you gonna get stronger if you keep asking other people to teach you Naruto asked. What do you mean by that? Konohamaru asked. What I mean is that if you want to make your own path, you have to do it on your own. No one is going to help you get stronger except for you and you only. So stop asking people to teach you all the time and invent your own. Naruto said. Okay, Naruto and Nikki. I'll do that from now on and create my own awesome. Konohamaru said. Naruto waved to the kid and headed back to his apartment. Sunset turned into night as everyone went to sleep except for three people. 324, 325, 326, 327, 328, 329, 330. Sasuke said as he had completed 331 handed push-ups. He then wiped the sweat off his forehead and drank from a bottle of water before looking at a picture of his family and his face started to sadden. Don't worry, I'll make things right. Sasuke said. Alright. I finally completed all of my books. Sakura said as she took off her glasses and breathed a sigh of relief, I'll be able to pass this test now. Sakura said with a smile. Kunase, check. Shurikens, check. Scrolls, check. Hmm, I think I'll be ready for this test. Naruto said. Sakura, Naruto and Sasuke all arrive at the training ground the next day nearly half asleep. Hey they all said to each other. Four hours later, they were nearly sleeping when suddenly, Kakashi appeared. Hey Omina, hi everyone. Kakashi said as he arrived on the grounds. You're late. They all shouted at him. Sorry, but an old lady needed help from a group of bandits that were attacking her and Kakashi began to say but then stopped as his students were glaring at him and not buying his lie, causing him to sweat. Okay, moving on. The first test will be a training test. The objective is simple, all you have to do is fight with everything you got. If you can last with me for 10 minutes, you will pass the test. Simple to understand, right? Kakashi smiled. Simple to understand, but not simple to accomplish. I can feel it, he's definitely not your average. Naruto thought, if there are no questions, let's begin. Ichiha Sasuke, you're up. Kakashi said, and the Ichiha grinned. It's about time. I've been itching to kick your ass. Sasuke said with a grin as he walked up to his sensei. Don't get too cocky, kid. Kakashi said. Hmm. Sasuke smirked as he got into his stance and stared at his sensei two meters, that's my best range. If I am further than that, I won't have nearly as much success. But that guy is A, which means he's an elite and thus won't let me get close to him easily, which means I'll have to find a way to close the distance. Sasuke thought. The Chiha Sasuke his strength and speed are above that of a normal genin, and his tojutsu is said to be the top of his class. If he wants to achieve maximum damage then he'll have to get close to me, probably about 2-3 to three meters at best, and he probably already knows I'm not going to let him get that close so easily. Kakashi thought. Here I come. Sasuke yelled out and started to do some seals and then reared back as he breathed in, Katen. Kakaku no jutsu, grand fireball technique. Sasuke yelled out and fired a huge fiery blast at Kakashi. Raiden. Musei Raiku no jutsu, lightning release. Silent lightning technique. Kakashi whispered as the fireball engulfed him. Not bad for a fire. Naruto said. 
But do you think he got Kakashi Sensei? Sakura asked. Not a chance. Naruto replied with a smirk, and on cue, Kakashi was nowhere to be found. Where is he? Sasuke thought as he looked around for his sensei, and then he quickly ducked as Kakashi was behind and tried to hit him with a right roundhouse kick to the head. But reflexes. Oh wait, this isn't good at all. Kakashi thought as he realized something. You're in my range. Sasuke said with a grin and then unleashed a volley of punches at Kakashi who was forced to block. I was careless. I thought I could have had him with my silent lightning technique, which allows me to use lightning chakra to cloak myself and thus allowing me to move unnoticed. But in reality, it was part of his trap. He knew he couldn't close the distance, but he knew I could close the distance. So in actuality, he anticipated that I would evade his previous technique and try to counter him at close range. Kakashi thought as he analyzed the string of events. Ryu sent you, Dragon Hurricane. Sasuke yelled and jumped in the air and threw two spinning kicks at Kakashi who was able to block them. I'm not done yet. Dragon Cutter. Sasuke yells and then brings his right leg down like an axe and strikes Kakashi upside the head with it. No way, Sasuke got Kakashi sensei. Sakura said, surprised. No, he missed. Naruto countered. Sakura looked confused for a second until Kakashi turned into a piece of log. Howarini. Sakura said in surprise. Shit, where is he? Sasuke cursed angrily as he looked for his sensei. Behind you. Kakashi simply said as he reappeared behind the Achiha and then connected with a kick to the ribs, knocking the boy away. Um, he was able to twist his body a bit in order to lessen the blow of my kick. Impressive Kakashi thought as he saw his student get back up. Damn it all, I can't hit him. Sasuke said as he got up, grunting in pain from the kick. So far Sasuke, I'm not impressed. Your report said you were the best in Tejutsu in your entire class, even surpassing the Inuzuka and Akamichi heirs, who both come from clans who possess tremendous aptitude for Tejutsu, but it looks to me as if the reports which I am not surprised since the Achihas were always better at ninjutsu than Tejutsu. Kakashi explained. Don't get too comfortable, Sensei. I was just warming up. Sasuke said with a smirk. Baka. Kakashi replied with a glare, surprising his student. In the world of the shinobi, one doesn't have time to play around in combat. When two people fight, they usually fight to the death, and in those situations, it's the one who strikes the quickest that wins. Playing around will only allow your opponent more time to live, and also more time to adapt to your strategy, until they find a way to kill you, even though they should have been dead a long time ago. Kakashi explained. Fine, if you want me to go all serious then that's what I will do. Hayakyakyu, swift leg. Sasuke said, and then instantly reappeared behind Kakashi before anyone could register it. He's so fast now. Sakura exclaimed. But what is that technique? Naruto asked. Kakashi turned around and prepared to block Sasuke's incoming left hook when the former disappeared again and reappeared in front of Kakashi and delivered a sweet kick. Fortunately, Kakashi was able to flip away but, as soon as he stood back up, Sasuke was right behind and threw a Ryu Senpyu which Kakashi was able to block. Sasuke then puts one to the ground to keep from falling to the ground and then shoots his left foot up to try to knock Kakashi in the air from under his chin, but he was able to back up slightly to avoid the blow. An opening. Kakashi said as he then threw a right hook at Sasuke who jumped back to avoid the blow, but then was stunned by an unknown force, which then allowed Kakashi to knock him back about 5 meters with a roundhouse kick to the face. What the hell was that? It was as if I was shocked by some electric force or something. Sasuke thought as he stood back up. That movement technique, did you create it all by yourself? Kakashi asked. Yeah I did. Sasuke replied. It's pretty impressive for someone from the academy. You basically stomp on the ground four times and use that momentum along with chakra activity to make you move that fast, as if you magically disappear, like Shunshin no, but faster. Kakashi said. It's definitely faster than my case Shunshin no jutsu, that's for sure. Naruto said. I knew Sasuke was good at tojutsu, but never this good. Sakura said. I always knew that. However, what I want to know is how Kakashi was able to paralyze Sasuke without even touching him. Naruto said. And that Tejutsu, you trained with Mido Gai, haven't you? Kakashi asked. Yes, and despite his freakish attitude and even freakier student, he is one hell of a teacher. Sasuke answered. Mido Gai sneezed while in the midst of training with his team. What's wrong, Gai Sensei? Lee asked. Oh nothing, for some strange reason, someone has mentioned me. Guy answered. Could it be that they are thanking you for influencing them with your flames of youth, sensei? Lee asked, ecstatic. Of course, that is the only explanation. They were so touched by my flames of youth that they spoke my name as a way to thank me. You're such a genius, Lee, that's why you're my precious student. Guy said, and then tears started to stream down from his face. I sensei. 
Lee said, also with tears streaming down his face. Lee. Guy replied, and then both teacher and student hugged each other, as for some unbelievable reason, a sunset appeared in the background along with water waves. Why did we have to be stuck with these two morons? Niji asked, embarrassed by the way the teacher and student were acting. Because someone hates us and wants us to suffer. Ten Ten answered, and they both sigh. This time, you're mine. Sasuke said, and then disappeared once more, and then reappeared right in front of Kakashi, and before the latter could react, Sasuke fired a point-blank fireball at him, engulfing him. Great job burning up our sensei, Sasuke. Naruto said. Oops, maybe I did go a bit too overboard. Sasuke said, laughing nervously. Brayton. Regakin, lightning release. Lightning fang fist. Kakashi, as he was coming from above with his left fist engulfed in electricity. Sasuke was able to dodge it to his right, and Kakashi ended up punching the ground, leaving a big hole. You're in my range again, Sensei. Sasuke said with a grin, as he was about to hit Kakashi with a roundhouse kick, only for Kakashi to bring his left fist upward from the ground, and then smack Sasuke in the face with a left hook uppercut, knocking the boy back about 8 meters. Thought you had me didn't you, Sasuke? Kakashi asked. Yeah, I could imagine you being a burned corpse by now. How the hell did you escape my fireball from point-blank range? I even used it in combination with the Hayakyaku technique. Sasuke asked, frustrated. It's simple really. I was able to read your seals while you were performing your high-speed technique and thus allowed me to react accordingly. Kakashi said. No way. You were able to actually keep up with both my sealing speed and movement speed. Sasuke asked in disbelief. Precisely. It was not a bad tactic to be honest, but if your opponent can read your seals then they can anticipate your technique and thus react accordingly. Kakashi said. That makes sense, but one thing I need to ask. How were you able to paralyze me without even landing a blow on me in our previous exchange? Sasuke asked. Because of my lightning chakra of course. Kakashi said, as he emitted electricity around his right hand. Of course. Electricity can not only shock, but also paralyze a person's body, rendering them immobile. Sakura said. And of course, I masked that electricity with my chakra in order to make it invisible to the human eye, so that way you wouldn't notice my trick. Kakashi said. So you're not just a person with chronic tardiness huh, Kakashi-sensei? Naruto said. Anyway, Kakashi said, ignoring Naruto's smart comment with great restraint, you've passed this exam. You showed great capacity in becoming a genin, and that is what I wanted to test. Next up is Sakura-chan. Kakashi said. Me? Sakura asked, nervous. I do believe we only have one Sakura in our team. Kakashi said. Don't worry Sakura-chan, you'll be just fine. I mean if Sasuke Baka here could go toe-to-toe -to -toe then someone much smarter than him can easily do the same. Naruto said grinning, as he knew he had earned a glare from the Achiha air. If Naruto-kun believes in me, then that means I can do it. Sakura thought, as she gained her resolve, and then walked up to her sensei. Then, Kakashi jumps back a couple of meters to put even more distance between them. Why did Kakashi just do that? Sasuke asked. It's because Sakura is a type of shinobi. The maximum range for is about 10 meters exactly, and so for Kakashi to avoid falling into one, he decided to stay out of that range. Right now, he's about 13 meters from Sakura. Naruto explained. But wait a minute, is simply an illusionary technique that confuses the five senses right? So why the need for distance? Sasuke asked. Because it requires the caster to emit chakra from their body into the opponent's body to take effect. By staying away from the caster, you have a higher chance of evading that chakra flow. Naruto explained. Ready, sensei? Sakura asked. Ready, as I'll ever be. Kakashi replied, hmm, no matter what it is, she'll never be able to hit me with it. A Jinjutsu's maximum distance is 10 meters at best, and the distance between me and her is approximately 15 meters. Kakashi thought, but then his eyes widened as Sakura dissolved into Sakura petals, and then he found himself in a forest full of Sakura petals on the ground and Sakura trees. What in the world? She got me from that distance. But how? Kakashi thought, and he then tried to cancel the, but found himself stuck in it, I can't release the Kakashi thought. Suddenly, petals flew around him, and started to cut him in the arms and legs. Kakashi tried to cancel them again and again, as he avoided the petals, but found himself unable to do so. This is unlike anything I have seen so far. Usually, the maximum range for is 10 meters at max, and hence why I distanced myself to an exact distance of 15 meters. And also, I made sure not to look at her eyes in case it was eye-induced, and made sure to watch out for anything that would reveal them. I took all of the precautions, and yet I was caught in her, and what's worse is that I can't release it. Kakashi thought, but then his eyes widened, as he realized something. Flashback, ready, sensei? Sakura asked. Ready, as I'll ever be. 
Kakashi replied and flashed back. She caught me as soon as she said those words. That was the activation for her Kakashi thought as he figured out what happened. Okay, let's review this. She is obviously longer than most and she activated it via her voice. Also, this can't be cancelled like any other, which means that in order to cancel it, I have to find the caster and weaken her to defeat them. As we speak, she is probably hiding in a spot in order to attack my weak point and defeat me, which means I have to fish her out now. Kakashi thought, and he then closed his eyes, and electricity started to emit from his hands. Not too far from Kakashi's location, Sakura was behind a tree, as she was observing her sensei. He doesn't seem to be doing much in terms of movement, but should I attack now? I could since I have the advantage, but what if he has built up his defenses already? I could be walking right into a trap, but if I don't do anything, he'll find me sooner or later. I have no choice, I have to attack. Sakura thought and then started to silently walk from tree to tree and then transformed into a flurry of sharp petals that flew and surrounded Kakashi and kept cutting him. Then Sakura's right arm came out of the flurry of petals with a kunai in hand and pointed to Kakashi's neck. It's over, Kakashi-sensei. Sakura said. Suddenly, Kakashi then turned into a piece of log, surprising Sakura, and before she knew it, Kakashi grabbed her arm and pulled it, effectively cancelling her transformation, and then pointed a kunai to her throat. Ansel now or else. Kakashi warned her. Damn, I have no choice. He has the advantage now. Sakura thought and then cancelled. It looks like Sakura-chan was able to hit Kakashi from beyond the normal range. Naruto said. I wonder how though. Sasuke said. That you used was incredible. Not many people use that nature, and the way you activate it was pretty clever, and its range is also incredible. Kakashi said. Thank you sensei. However, how did you know I was going to attack? Sakura asked. By using my Raikou Harigam, Lightning Wire. Kakashi said. Lightning Wire? Sakura asked. I basically manipulated my Lightning Chakra and turned it into thin electric wires that are extremely hard to see via the naked eye. All a person has to do is slightly touch them, and it will automatically warn me of an incoming enemy. You probably felt a small shock on your way to my location, right? Kakashi asked. Hum to think of it, I did, but it was so many skill that I paid no attention to it. Sakura said. And that small shock was my wire. I then placed a Kawarini trap and hid myself using my Musei Raiku no Jutsu until I had a clear shot at you. Kakashi explained. Okay then, let's try another tactic. Sakura said. That's enough for now. Kakashi said, interrupting the girl. What do you mean? I barely did anything, and I have so many other techniques to try. I mean, I studied all of those books for this test. Sakura said, as she pulled out dozens of books from her book bag, causing the others to look at her wide-eyed. How many books do you own, Sakura? Sasuke asked, flabbergasted. Let's see, about 300. Sakura answered. 300, the others exclaimed. I know, it's not enough is it? Sakura asked. It's more than enough. The others exclaimed. Anyway Sakura, your skills with that showed me all I needed to know, and the fact is that you have passed the first test, as well. Kakashi said, up next is the smart ass. Kakashi said, as he now turned his attention to Namika's Naruto. About time. By the way Sakura-chan, great job on the. Naruto said to the girl, as she was returning to her spot. Wish me luck guys. Naruto said, and then walked toward Kakashi. Now, I finally get the chance to see what the son of sensei can do. Kakashi thought, with a hint of anticipation and pride, as he saw the living legacy of his sensei in the flesh, if he is truly like sensei, then he has used the bouts with his teammates as scouting reports on my abilities and formulated strategies to counter them. Kakashi thought. Had a Kakashi despite being good at tojutsu, he's an ninjutsu type shinobi, and with the he has used so far, and also, he has strong defensive and offensive on top of that, and what's worse is that I don't know his exact range. It seems I only have one course of action. Naruto thought and then did the seal for the Cage Bushin and created three clones. Cage Bushin, huh? Cage Bushin is a Jounin level ninjutsu that has three purposes. 1. To overpower the opponent with mass numbers. 2. To gather information on the opponent. 3. To use it as a diversion to create an opening. Now, let's see which way he goes. Kakashi thought. Okay clones, let's do it. Naruto said and he, along with the clones dispersed themselves. Suddenly, one of the clones dashed toward Kakashi. Inpu. Kazuyeba, Ninja Art. Wind Blade, the first clone yelled and then created a wind that came in the form of a sword and tried to slash Kakashi with it, but Kakashi was able to dodge the hit. Regakin no Jutsu. Kakashi yelled and then knocked the clone back about 10 meters with an electric right punch to the gut, he's making his clone stay longer than usual. Kakashi thought the clone did not disappear. Duotin. Kaze Haashi no Jutsu. Wind Element. 
Wind wave pressure, the second clone said, as he unleashed a blast of hot air at Kakashi with his left hand. Ergaha no Jutsu, lightning release. Lightning fang wave technique. Kakashi said, and then swiped his right upwards, and unleashed a wave of lightning that traveled through the ground, and cancelled the clone's technique. Shippuha no Jutsu, wind release. Hurricane wave technique. The third Naruto clone yelled, and then unleashed a hurricane from his right fist at Kakashi who jumped up in the air to avoid it. Now I've figured it out. He's a mid-range fighter. I used my cage Bushin to test each possible range with a difference, and even though he was able to counter my close range and mid-range attacks, he wasn't able to counter my last attack, or rather, he couldn't effectively. Ninjutsu can be executed from any range, but however, if they are executed away from their best range, then they become much weaker, and if he was long range, then he would have no problems pulling out to counter my last at the distance between my clone and him, which means he is not effective at long range. And while he used a close range to defend against my first clone, his strongest was the one he used against my second clone, and thus proves he is a mid-range fighter at best. The problem is that I'm mid-range too, and also he is stronger than me, but I can still win. Naruto thought. Okay clones, use whirlwind formation. Naruto said, and the clones nodded. They then quickly started to move randomly around Kakashi at high speed, while Naruto went through some seals. What is he planning with those clones? Kakashi thought. Duotin. Kei's Haashi no Jutsu. Wind element. Wind wave pressure, Naruto yelled, and fired off his technique once again. The Kashi tried to dodge it only to get kicked in the back by one of the clones. Now I see what he's trying to do. He recognized my best range, as a mid-range type, and he also recognized that he is one, as well, but weaker than me. So, he's using those clones to keep me from moving, like a fence, and also on my toes, so I don't have time to counter while he keeps on attacking me from a safe distance. That's a sick way to fight someone. Kakashi thought. It looks like Naruto may be able to win against Sensei. Sasuke grinned. Do you think so? Sakura asked. Brayton. Daichi Raiku Dejeki no Jutsu, lightning release. Ground lightning shock technique. Kakashi yelled, as he then slammed his right hand onto the ground and unleashed electric waves that stunned Naruto and his clones. When Naruto finally regained his senses, he felt a kunai behind him. I win. Kakashi said behind Naruto. I wouldn't be so sure, sensei. Naruto said, from behind Kakashi, as the one in front of Kakashi disappeared. Trust me kid, I'm sure. Kakashi said, from behind Naruto, as the other Kakashi was also a clone. Let me guess, you created a clone while I was disoriented from your attack, and then used that clone to come up behind my clone, well you hid with that cloaking technique of yours, right? Naruto asked with a smirk. Yes I did though I am impressed with how fast you were able to create another clone. And also, that first exchange was a way to find my best range wasn't it, so that way you knew how to attack me, right? Kakashi asked. Exactly. Naruto said. Good enough. You have also passed the first test. Kakashi said, alright team, you've passed the first exam, and now you must pass the second one. I call it the bell test. Kakashi said, as he then took out two bells tied together. Bells. The three genins exclaimed quizzically. Yep, bells. The objective for this test is to simply get the bells from me, and you pass. Kakashi said sternly. But Kakashi sensei, there's only two bells. Doesn't that mean one of us will not pass? Sakura asked. Of course. There, the one who did not get the bell will be sent to the academy, regardless of the fact that you passed the first test, understood. Kakashi said sternly, causing the genins to gulp. Begin. Kakashi says, and all three genins hide into the forest. So they've hidden themselves, not bad. Now, if they can see underneath the underneath then they will truly be my team. Kakashi thought. Well, in the meantime, let me start reading the masterpiece of all masterpieces. Kakashi said, and then pulled an orange book from his pouch. He started to read it, and giggled like a little girl. This test is ridiculous. He already knows we can't beat him even after throwing at him everything we could, and yet he wants us to get the bells from us. And not only that, but there are only two bells, which means one of us will fail anyway. No, there has to be a point to this test or else he wouldn't have wasted his time with this, but what is it? Naruto whispered, as he racked his brain to come up with the answer while observing Kakashi. Damn it, if he only had a bigger brain than I. That's it. Naruto said, as he figured it out, and then left his position. It seems Naruto has it figured out. Kakashi mentally noted, as heard the genin move within the forest. Naruto continued to move through the trees until he was able to find Sasuke. Sasuke, I need your help. Naruto said to the Achiha. My help. For what? Sasuke asked, confused that Naruto would need help. Listen, this test is about teamwork, not about individual skills. Naruto said. Teamwork. Sasuke repeated. Yes. Think about it, can we really beat him one-on-one? -on -one? 
you saw what happened in the first test, we couldn't even hit him once. So why have us try again for some bells, unless he wants us to try to get the bells, as a team. Naruto explained. I see, that makes sense. Alright, I'm in, but we'll need Sakura's help as well. Sasuke said. He still hasn't shown any openings. Sakura thought. Hey, Sakura. Naruto said behind her, startling the girl. Naruto-kun. Sasuke. What are you guys doing here? Shouldn't you be trying to get the bells? Sakura asks. Sakura, listen to me. This test is about teamwork and we need to work together to get the bells. Naruto explains. But there's only two bells. Wouldn't one of us go back anyway? Sakura asked. That's not the true purpose of this test. He's only testing us in order to see if we can work as a team. Why do you think we were put in teams of three? Because that is how it's always been. Naruto explains. Which means that the two bells are just a ploy to try and divide us and not make us see the true purpose behind his test. Sakura says, realizing what was going on. Yes, so thus we need to come up with a plan to beat this guy, and that's where you come in. Naruto said to Sakura. You want me to create a plan? Sakura asked. Yes, I do. You're the smartest of us three, and thus we need your intelligence to come up with a plan. Naruto asked. Alright then, here's the plan. Sakura grinned. The Kashi continued to read his book until he saw Sasuke standing in front of him. It looks like you're ready to try and take the bell from me, right Sasuke? Kakashi said as he put his book back into the pouch. Sasuke then made some seals and then, Duotin. Kei's Haashi no Jutsu. Wind element. Wind wave pressure, Sasuke yelled out and shot a wind blast from his palm. The wind attack. But Sasuke isn't, Kakashi said mentally as he avoided the wind attack only to find himself bound to the cherry blossom tree once again. Sakura's Kai. Kakashi thought and cancelled up, only to find his bells missing and in the hands of Sasuke, with Sakura and the de-transformed Naruto next to him, all smirking. I see you guys figured out the concept behind this test. You should be proud, not many have in the past. But tell me something, who came up with the plan? Kakashi asked. I did. I knew you wouldn't expect Sasuke to use a wind ninjutsu, so I had Naruto transform into Sasuke to throw you off long enough to use my on you, and by the time you would cancel it, Sasuke would be able to use his speed to dash in and get the bells from you. Sakura explained. Excellent plan, Sakura. As of now, we are officially Team 7. I want you guys to go get some rest because starting tomorrow, we're starting missions. Kakashi says. Yada. We did it. Good job Sakura and inner self said, while the two boys smirked. I have a feeling this team is going to be something special. Kakashi said, as he and the rest of his team walked off the training grounds as they were about to start on their new adventures. Thanks for watching my video and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.